Perfect. And ladies and gentlemen, here we go. The next game in our tournament here for the Singapore Heroes Community Cup 2 on the blue team. And the overlay is finally fixed and looking really good right now. But on the blue team, it looks like it is going to be Sui Pian La. And Poisoner will be playing as the Johanna. You got Roseanne onto the Jaina. You got Lorek playing as Regar. Bakatora playing as Sylvanas. And Chrisian, or Chrisian, Chrisian actually, will be playing as the ETC. And on the red team, we got Ella Struct. And Dust X there will be playing as the Tyrell, John Gald, that's the captain on the Karazim top lane. We seem to be looking at uh, Arthur's being played by Karin. SG Brother, that's a, that's a true brother right there. And that's the Butcher. At the bottom lane, it's going to be Desold Eben. I'm just going to call him Desold for simplicity's sake. Let's test this out. Oh, okay. Uh, this overlay, I'm really not used to observing after coming back from... <laughs> from the America Championship and all of the awesome production in NA. So hopefully I, I don't screw these up here. Okay, so the talent choices, here we go. Uh, it's gonna be with the win, Night Takes Fun. I really like this screen a lot, so shout out to Ali for doing this. Uh, this screen is really cool and it, it just has a lot, of, a lot of information that the top bar doesn't have. Uh, rolling like a stone, Night Takes Fun. Deep Chill, Spirit Walker's Grace, standard build coming out from Sway, I think it's pretty okay. Uh, really like a stone is not what the Koreans go for. They will go for a little bit buff on the uh, on the guitar hero because I think that that helps them with sustain. And Creasy there with a nice uh, face melt, but it's not going to do anything really. And on the red team, it is going to be Transcendence. That's the default Karazim build. Season Marksman of Vitals here. As well as Regeneration Master on both Arthurs as well as Tyrael. Vitals is going to be really good because it really just helps Butcher sustain through the lane. Allows him to not go back home so often. That's it. Mid lane. We're going to see a fight happening here. Jungle dropping a lot of HP. Blizzard connecting. And Karazim will go down. Level wise, we're looking at a bit of a level lead here for Sway. And they are looking very, very good. Uh, mid temple is really important because you want to have almost full charges. If you have full charges of the mid temple, that on any temple, in fact, if it's the first time it's damaging a lane, you will take down the healing wall. And the healing wall is important in the mid lane specifically because this is a big battleground and teams, when you rotate, you want to go through the mid lane. You want to tap the well, you want to recharge and, and just uh, re-energize. Bottom lane, Bakatora is here, and this is exactly why Savannah's at the bottom lane is really good. You get the lane pressure off against Raynor. Top lane, Arthur's is going to be there, but like I said, the rotations from Sway is looking really good. They make sure at least that they are able to get some form of advantage and holding off the lane pressure from Arthur's is important because Arthur's clears the lane uh, pretty, pretty fast. There's no more charges left in the temple. Nice hauling blast, Blizzard connecting, and a face mount. Ashy Brother will go down. Jungle swinging by. Unfortunately, the Breath of Heaven is not going to connect on Arthur's. So 2 minutes and 50 seconds in, and we're looking at new talents being picked up by both sides. It will be in Venom, Loss of Hope, Double Neck Guitar, uh, Snowstorm, Feral Heart. Feral Heart is pretty okay. This means that it will be a support-based uh, Regar, which is, which is pretty consistent, I think. Um, Regar has just really dropped through the tier. Uh, a lot of Feral Lunge build has been a lot more popular. Uh, but I personally prefer the heal build a lot more because I think that you cannot afford to go for those extra bite damages. I think that's a little bit too greedy in my opinion. This soul here should be okay. And on the side here for um, Ella Shrugged, protective shield, focus attack, cheap shot, as well as even in death and destruction. Now, I like to bring attention to cheap shot. Cheap shot here um, is, not the cons is not the usual build for Butcher. They go for Phil X. Phil X is important because you really want to have the increased range. Uh, it allows Butcher to go for objectives like, um, you could say, the Immortals a little bit better and Battlefield of Eternity, but maybe because there's no such um, objectives here in the Sky Temple. But even then, I would appreciate increased range on Philalex. I think it's 20% if I'm not wrong, uh, on um, the Hamstring, which is, by the way, the Q button for uh, Butcher. It's really important because you want to have the increased range so that he doesn't have to overextend every single time. But we'll see what kind of a result this will provide. Ella struck with a very nice rotation on the top part of this meta. Pick up the Bruiser camp. And uh, John Gall pulling back from the mid lane. The temple will activate as well. Uh, Sway opting to go for a bit of an extra aggression with the bottom lane. Uh, Siege Giants getting picked up. Creasy there taking some damage from the four-man aggression from Atlas struck. 
More talents getting picked up. And Silver Poison Conviction. Just keep, just keep rocking. Frost Armor. Frost Armor. We'll talk about that in a bit. Cleanse for Regar. And hold that thought. A fight happening here. Rainer with the machine gun. Firing off against the enemy team. Nice three man. Power slide by Chris Young. But where is the follow up? Bakatora not really able to do any damage in an instant jungle. Applying a lot of pressure. Actually, brother. Making sure that it's got a lot of the extra pressure being applied there. Another chain stun against Alistruck, but Poison are now in a lot of trouble and Johanna will go down. Chrissy does not have the mosh speed. He has to pull back, but will go down. Two for nothing exchange. Jaina was not able to join the fight because he was at the top lane clearing the Bruiser cam. That's a really good strategy. Half of the bottom temple will actually go towards... Um, actually, it's Jekyll Temple, I think. Will go towards... Let's see. We'll go towards Ella's Struck here. And you can see the hamstring connecting on Lorek as well. But so far, would say that the push by the bottom lane kind of negated. This means that uh, Ella's Struck is in a pretty good spot because the top lane, they have to the lead there. And they also have full charges. They're going to get level 10 first. So back to Talon choices here. Revolution Overdrive is going to get picked up as well as Abattoir. Abattoir is a very greedy build, I feel. Normally, uh, a Butcher who is looking for aggressive play should be going for the standard hamstring build, which does not include Cheap Shot, by the way. Uh, but Abattoir means that this is going to be a right-click Butcher. Immediately, you know for sure that you have to go for some reactionary stuff, which is why I like to point out Frost Armor by Jaina. That's the main reason why you have Frost Armor here. So both teams very reaction-based. Uh, That's really good. You also will see bad momentum up for Tiro. So Tiro's going for full-fledged uh, damage. And that's something that I cannot really agree with. Um, bad momentum still pretty okay, but that burns through the mana very, very fast. And I think that, you know, it's not that big of a deal, but you really want to go for a little bit extra help here uh, in terms of damage. Oh, wow. Sanctification. This is why I actually prefer if um, Tyrio went for more of a sustained build than this build because he is going to pop Sanctification. But that's going to be okay. And there we go. The seven side strike on Creasy. Creasy dropping first. And the Sanctification just to buy some time. There goes the extra damage from the back lines. And Jaina is going to get bursted down. A nice last hit there by John Galt. Lorac going to pull back. Level 10 both sides. Heroics already expanded. Three on the side of Sway and five on the side of uh, AS. But standard after this build, by the way, destruction into rune tap. It's pretty good to see. The fight there was really one sided, in my opinion. I, I thought that, um, that basically ETC as a hero really needs Uther to support for uh, flawless potential on the mosh pit. You know. Teams nowadays, they don't really care whether you're for Mosh Pit, they're looking for Burst. And that's exactly what happened there. The 7 sided Strike kind of threw Chris Young completely off guard. But the good news is that he still has got a Mosh Pit for this next Temple. The bad news is that there's two Temples. So if I'm on the side of Elastruct, or rather AS, uh, on the red team, I don't think I'm actually going to go for the fight here. But they don't care. Ruthless Onslaught onto Jaina. The stun is going to connect. And there goes the Mosh Pit. And everybody is going to dance. It's the Harlem Shake. Five man stun. But where is the follow up? Seven side of Strike. A little bit too slow. There goes the extra help there from Sanctification. Lorek is taking a lot of damage. Bunny and Sasha will connect on Jaina. Jaina is to pop some damage against Karin. Water Elemental will come out. And that's a big mistake by the red team. Does there. Needs to pull back. But he's not able to do so and will go down even in death means that it's going to go for damage. I think the target here will be the Sylvanas. It will not be enough. These salts going to be okay. But look at that engagement. Like I said, if you're on a raid team, you don't want to fight there. There is no point you're going for a fight like this. Especially such a choke point with no one on a follow-up. That's really, really bad. So let's pull up the replay. We've got that fight captured 100%. Just bring that out. Look at your brother. The engagement is good, but T-Rail, Sanctification, you don't want to be so close. You want to use our Dreams Mind to go in directly and use Sanctification close to the Mosh Pit just to keep the team safe. Using it after Mosh Pit, the damage has been done. Members are down to 50% HP. That's not what you want to see. And Karazim going down due to the damage quickly coming in uh, from, I think, uh, Bakatora as well as Poison. I think that Joanna did a great job with the peel there. The Condemn was flawless. And yeah, this is the problem there. I know Sanctification is a great counter against Mosh Pit, but positioning. Guys, it's always about the positioning right there. So with uh, Twist of Fate, it seems like Sui Pei is going to get both temples. They're also going to get a lot of these charges fired off against Atlas Shrug. 
Rosan. Oh, this is over extension. And Elastron wants to punish there. Lamb of the Sloth, they're not connecting nicely. Rosan now is actually not inside the help range. Lorak with those heals, it will not be enough. Sanctification making sure the rest of the raid team will be able to sustain through that fight. Lorak does not have ancestral healing for the next 50 seconds. He just used it right there. Johanna in a lot of trouble getting some extra slows. There goes Ruthless Onslaught again, but Unstoppable means that it will not be a stun. Lorak should have pulled back, but he's completely out of position right now. John Galt going for extra damage, and here comes the Space Cowboy. Rainer with the right click damage. Down goes Regar. Two men down on the side of Sway. They threw that fight that was completely unwarranted. The bottom lane aggression should not have been done like that. You want to go for camps in that instance instead of a bottom lane push. But I think that they're really just making sure that um, they have some extra pressure. Could be a bit of a mistake calculating the uh, respawn timer on the enemy side. But there's still one level up and that looks pretty okay. Looking at the next talent, the next talent tier here, uh, it seems like we're going to see Evasive Fire for extra movement speed and uh, Showstopper. You're going to see Burning Rage as well for some damage. That's going to be okay. Uh, it is going to be Ice Block. Yeah, Ice Block. You have to go Ice Block. This is a protective uh, defensive Jaina build. So the damage from Jaina in this game is not going to be a lot. And that worries me. It worries me because Sylvana's damage may not be enough against the likes of Butcher and Raynor. Raynor, he is going for Giant Killer. So this guy, he's not going to slow down. Uh, Crave Flash, that means extra movement speed up on the Butcher. We land us up on Karazim. Is a completely safe uh, defensive Karazim. He's not going to go for Quicksilver. This is, although a dive build, but he knows for sure that he wants to make sure that the damage is not going to be enough. My problem here is that there may not be a lot of crowd control that he has to worry about, except for uh, Jaina. Maybe that's it. And ETC some stuns. Okay, there's good enough amount of uh, you know crowd control there. Silence and stuns and slows in general. So that's going to help him stay alive. So no complaints. Uh, really, I, I just thought that the, the crowd control that Soipiela provides could be sidestepped and Relentless may not really be necessary. After is going for Trill of Frost instead. Wow, more enemies getting stunned is a, it's a really good thing. Um, but after they don't really pick up this Helen here. Wait, hold that tart. There we go, two men, one getting stopped already quickly. And Lamb of the Slot on Bakatora, he is able to run away quickly. Lamb of the Slaughter there, not able to connect. And there goes the Willing Arrow, and it seems like Alistruck is again in a lot of trouble. Chris here, using the Marsh Pit, not really useful, but it is going to be enough. The whole team is going to survive here. On the side of Sweepila, and Alistruck, Dust is the only member that's going to walk out. That was a little bit of a one-sided fight. Unfortunately, with the uh, Haunting Wave, it seems like the Lamb of the Slaughter will be cancelled out. Cold Embrace also for more damage. Why not? This is Numbing Blast because of Cold Embrace. Teams no longer stack up vulnerability on uh, the Northern Exposure because it's not needed. We're also going to pull in the replay now that uh, there's a bit of a downtime on both sides. So let's see what happened there. We saw a Marsh Pit. It's on cooldown. Chrissy Young on the, um, on the ETC. But it was quickly... It's actually not very useful. Yeah, Sanctification this time around was pretty good. Uh, unfortunately, he was not able to cover the back line, which includes Butcher. If you look at Bakatora and Rosan, both of those members are doing a lot of damage. Um, yeah, should have used Sanctification there. That's all I have to say. Should have used Sanctification there. It's in a good position. Unfortunately, not able to do that. Again, a second failed engagement. I'm sorry, Alice Shrug. That's the main reason why they, they lost there. They have to make sure that the Sanctification is... Uh, is really on point. So here we have um, a top Bruiser Camp attempt by SBL. And the blue team is going to get this up really well. They've got level 60 on both sides. Let's pull up. Oh, maybe not. We're going to see a fight. And Butcher again. He charges a target. But cancels out. Sanctification should not be used like that. Five seconds before Marsh Pit. But Sylvanas is gone. Willing Arrow not useful at all. Rest of the team wants more. Chrissy looking for a turnaround mechanic. But there goes Lemo to slaughter on Rosan. It does have the ice block. Will now use the end. And the Marsh Pit again. The five team Marsh Pit. The five members dancing away. The damage is not going to be there. But this one's going to trade with Jaina. Jaina's gone already. Lorek taking a lot of damage. Will go down. Nice holy ground there. Chrissy Young with the great Marsh Pit. But the damage is not on point. The problem here is that they don't have enough burst on that side. Blizzard was on cooldown. It was not really used. Poison needs to pull back. 
This is a mistake. It's a huge mistake. Sylvanas was gone, actually. So that fight could not be won anyway. I think the, the real way to go around in a fight was to ditch the ETC post Marsh Pit and pull back. At least he will not lose so much uh, EXP here. But it is still about half a level lead for SBL. Small mistakes here and there. Fight could have done a lot. Could have been a lot better. Chrissy Young needs to be very careful. So far, the Marsh Pits are really, really good by the ETC. Afters better not let this guy run. He can stop him, and I think he will. No, he's not even going to use Death Coil. Wow. Rest of the members are in the vicinity, but they're not going to care. They're going to let ETC go back. This is a really merciful Afters we've got. I don't think we've got time for replay in this next fight. Let's see. Yep, we don't have. Rest of the members are going to the top lane here. Top temple. We'll go to the red team. Blue team. SBL will secure the mid temple. In terms of fortification position, I would say a rather structural position. My bad. We're looking at a mid lane going down. The top lane looks to be okay. It's pretty dead even, actually. So, this is where you ask yourself, you know there's no Moshpi for the next 20 seconds. You know that. Are you going for a fight? They're going to abandon this fight. They're going to abandon this temple. They're going to wait for it. Bottom lane is almost gone for ES. They cannot afford to lose a fight. If they lose a fight, a possible game-ending moment here for SBL will happen. They just need to take down the bottom keep and go directly to the core. I think it will be possible. They are applying a lot more pressure again with Siege Camps here. And that's really important. Now for ETC, it's the Speed Metal. Speed Metal increases movement speed by 20%. And it's really important because I think for ETC, you want to have good positioning. That's the reason why Chris Young's able to go uh, into good positions. And it's primarily because of the choke points still at the end. Here you have Circle of Life, which increases the heal. What most people know but don't use is that you have the crowd control reduction for the whole team on the Circle of Life, or rather not Circle of Life, on the Breath of Heaven talent here at level uh, 16. But yeah, Bullseye for extra stun. This is going to be really important for Rainer because now he can stop the Mosh Pit. But look at this, Tour Bus. Tour Bus is very greedy. I would actually go for Death Metal. I think Death Metal is a lot better because now instead of having just one guy cancelling uh, the one guy cancelling the Mosh Pit, you have uh, a total of two. I think Butcher can cancel Mosh Pit as well. Tyrell as well. But now Rainer, so that's three. But the main reason why I didn't say three in the first place is because Butcher, he's being used for engagements. So he's not really used to stop anything. Yeah, goes Syndra, goes uh, Ashley Brother with the Ruthless Onslaught on the Bakatari immediately. Lamb of the Slaughter, not used just yet. The whole team holding. Where is the Sanctification? There we go. Butcher out of position though. It's a little bit too small to AOE. Chrissy Young using the Marsh Pit behind, but not enough. There goes Extra Slow. The Salt canceled that really well. And there goes also the Search for Poisoner. SBL may win this fight. Jungal goes down. Blizzard connecting. Does now in a lot of trouble. Tiro will go down. And Diesel's the only guy left. He should not go down here. This could be game. SBL is looking to knock off the keep here. Five men down. It's a five man team. Why? We got the right team in a lot of trouble. Sanctification was completely a whiff. Lamb of the Slaughter not used at all. It could be a strategy. That's okay. But the problem I have with that fight there was the seven sided strike not doing anything. Stumshul not doing anything. And they were not able to take down either Sylvanas or Jaina in the process. So SBL, they will win this game and they will proceed on to the round of eight in the upper bracket. Right now, we're looking at AS again with the Syndra Gosa. Actually, Brother dives in. Also going to see the extra leap connecting and the seven sided strike against Lili specifically. But a wave of renovations is going to connect the second.